In this video, I'm going to show you how to blur an image using MATLAB code. And hopefully you can generalize this to see how you could use MATLAB to alter images in other ways. Now, MATLAB's not really designed as image manipulation software, right? It's not Photoshop, right? But there are still some cool things we can do with it. And if nothing else, it's excellent practice manipulating matrices. Now, I need to say that the source of this question that I'm going to answer here is from a Coursera course, Introduction to Programming with MATLAB by Vanderbilt University. If you are taking that course, please work through this problem on your own. I do not condone cheating, copying from my video right here. Now, in my class, the way I do cheating, you're allowed to look at an answer, but you have to learn from looking at that answer. You have to be able to close it, put it aside, not look back at it, and then write up your own solution. And if you can do that, then you have internalized the knowledge. And that's what learning is, right? So maybe consider taking that approach if you happen to be taking this exact same course, which by the way, is quite a good one. I think it teaches mostly the same things that I do, but it's got some really fun questions in there, some of which I've borrowed, such as this one. All right, so the question is to write a function called blur that blurs an input image. Now the blur function is gonna take two inputs a matrix representing the image, and a value that they've decided to name W. W is going to specify the width and height of the blur that we're applying. You can think of it as how big of a smudge are you making if you were imagining we had like a canvas of paint or something like that. Basically, it's going to work like this. If W is 2, then we're going to average a 5 by 5 square of pixels and replace the middle pixel with that average. Now, how did I get five from a W of two? Well, the W is, you can think of it kind of like a radius, but it's not quite a radius because it's applying to a square. Two W plus one is going to be the width and height of our square because there's the middle pixel, and then there's a W number of pixels to the left and a W number of pixels to the right, and the same vertically. Pixel in the center, W above, and W below. We're going to average those together and replace the middle pixel with that new result. And there's more text here describing how that would work. But let's check out an example of it and see how uh, the solution works. I'm using a built-in MATLAB function, imread. And by the way, all of this code works in Octave exactly as shown here, except it is less fast. Kind of like in the previous video, how the fractals ran a lot slower in Octave. This also runs quite a bit slower. We're talking about like a handful of seconds, a big handful, rather than what appears to be almost instantaneous in MATLAB. So it's just unfortunate Octave is not as optimized. But imread is a function in both Octave and MATLAB, and you can use it to read an image from file. I'm going to use a PNG image, very common format. Uh, I don't know if like JPEG or whatever is supported, but that's easy to look up. And then we're going to use imshow, same as in the previous video, to display out this image. IMG, this variable, is a matrix, right? So we're reading from PNG and we're generating a matrix from that PNG data. And here I'm going to blur the image uh, with a blur of four and we'll show some other values. And then I'm going to display it out with another IM show at the bottom. Let's go ahead and run it. So here on the left is my before image of a CNM, Central New Mexico Community College. And on the right, you can see it's all blurry. And if I change the four to a larger number, now it will run slower is one downside, and rerun it though, you can see, hopefully, that there is even more blur than there was before. And if instead I make it a smaller number, like just two, there will be less blur than there was before. Also, it will run faster. And so hopefully you can see the difference there. So let's go check out how this blur function works. This is my solution, by the way. It's not the solution necessarily presented on the uh, Coursera course. Um, but when I took that course myself, uh, this is the solution I wrote up, and I think it's very nice. So I'm going to talk through it. I get a copy of the image that I'm going to blur. This is important. I mentioned on the fractal video that I made a copy of like the image there. I don't think that one was at all necessary. This one is. And the reason why is we want to look at an average of a bunch of pixels in a particular area and then replace the middle pixel with that resulting average. But when I average a later on pixel, I want to average against the originals, not the already blurred values. So the copy 
so that I have access to both the original and a blurry version is very important. I'm going to get how many rows and columns there are. I'm going to loop over the indexes of the rows, loop over the indexes of the columns, and then right here I'm going to index a submatrix around the central pixel that I want to change, the pixel at r, c, row r, column c, and I just average that submatrix and put that result into the matrix right there. Now I skipped over some stuff. What's this? And what's this? This code right here is just to prevent from going out of bounds. Because again, I have this frame around a central pixel, but what if that frame is on the edge of my image? I don't want to index into a location that doesn't exist, that I'm not allowed to index. So for example, along the top, R is the row of the center pixel I want to change. Subtract W to get the top pixel above it that I want but don't go further than one. Choose whichever is larger, the maximum of r minus w or one. If I'm at the very bottom, well, I want the current row plus w more rows beyond it, but if that row doesn't exist, don't use it, right? Only go up to a minimum of rows. And the same exact thing for the left and right side. And then literally, this is just an indexing, right? Give me rows from top to bottom, comma, columns from left to right, that's my submatrix. Access that or treat it as a column vector. Give me the single numeric average and put that into this new matrix result at row R, column C. This right here, this copying, it's not so much a copying as it is just pre-allocation. In fact, another way to do this would have been, and that might even be slightly more efficient, I'm not sure, but it's the same thing basically. It's just pre-allocation. And that's it, that's how to blur an image. What's cool about this, in my opinion, is that the image itself is just a matrix. Let's ask, what's the size of that image? It's a three-dimensional matrix. 299 rows, 440 columns, that's just the number of pixels in my image that I chose to use. Three pages. First page for red, second page for green, third page for blue. And we can access this the way you would any other matrix, right? Give me the values from rows 100 to 103, columns from 400 to 403, and then just page 2. I don't know. And there they are. These values are uint8, unsigned 8-bit integers, so they range from 0 to 255, which is a very common way to represent an image. And again, I forget. I think 0 is like white, and if they're all 255, then it's black, but I don't remember exactly. But my output matrix is a little bit different, isn't it? So what if instead of image, I look at output, those same pixels? This actually surprised me. Um, this is not what I expected, which can be really uh, enlightening. So here, I'm just doing an average. There is nothing about this that suggests I wouldn't be able to get a double value. But apparently, and I, maybe I should have suspected this, since I'm already dealing with 8-bit unsigned integers, I'm going to keep or get as a result an unsigned 8-bit integer. So that's kind of neat. Also, you'll notice here, I'm only using rows and columns. The third dimension seems to be averaged for me. So MATLAB is doing some extra work here. Now, I could have written this to deal with the third dimension explicitly, but uh, I didn't. And I didn't have to, which is a really neat feature. And lastly, just to really hammer home the point that I'm just dealing with matrices of numbers, Let's just do some other things to it rather than blurring. What if we just transpose the image? Now, transpose is not going to work in three dimensions, so I just transposed the first page of the matrix. All rows, all columns, page one. So my understanding is that this is just the red component here, but let's check it out. All right, and there you go. So you have your original, and you have the transpose version. This is not just a rotation. It's a rotation and a mirror image, okay? What if we convert the image values, the uint8 values, to double, divide by 256 so that they're between 0 and 1, and square them? You can also generate images with values between 0 and 1. That's totally fine. It'll just kind of like be scaled into 0 to 255. And I did that here so that I could apply the squaring. Because if I started with values 0 to 255 and squared them, I'd have to like write the code myself to keep them in that interval. And I just didn't want to deal with that. And look at the result. It looks like more saturated to me. I mean, it also seems a little bit darker. So maybe zero is black and uh, one or 255 is white. I'm not sure. Anyway, I think this makes a lot of sense though, because 
And I was talking about this in the fractal video, right? If you square a number that is close to zero, especially a number less than one, it's going to get closer to zero dramatically. The closer it is to zero, the closer it will get to zero when you square it. The closer a number is to one, the more it'll stay the same when you square it. So I think of the squaring here as having like a stretching effect. And lastly, I just do something absurd down here. I take the absolute value of the cosine of every pixel in the image. Why did I choose to do the cosine? Eh, why not? And I don't know what you would have expected, but it looks kind of like noise. It looks a little bit like garbage. And uh, that's fine, because I was just playing around and I wanted to see what it would do. And if you take away just one point from this video, let it be that images are simply matrices of numbers, perhaps just even rows and columns. But if we have red, green, and blue components, maybe a three-dimensional matrix with rows, columns, and three pages, one for each color. And that's all for this video.